In the ERP, there are many forms. You'll need to click on the main menu and then click on the forms tab. Within each form, there are some in-system guidance notes called NOLIs. You can click onto these by selecting the light bulb in the top right. You can then go into whichever form it relates to. Uh, you may need to put it into alphabetical order by clicking on topic to find the form you need. Click into it and this can stay open whilst you are completing the form. In each form, there is a form description field. Most forms this is greyed out, but for some it is a free text box and it's also a mandatory box. You can see that it's mandatory because there is a red asterisk at the side and you will not be able to save or submit the form without having something in all the mandatory boxes. As you can see, some of the fields are pre-populated. So for the form owner, it will have looked at your record and it will have selected you as the form owner, as the person completing the form. For some forms, there is more than one tab within that form that needs completed. Some of these will be for your manager to complete once this is workflowed to them. But please check that you complete all these tabs. Complete the first one that is open and then scroll back up to the top and then check if you need to complete any more details. Click on the drop down by name and select the name and then the drop down by position and select the correct one. For example, you may have more than one position and therefore more than one line manager and you need to make sure that this is selected so that it workflows to the right person. Once you have selected the correct position or whatever is in the drop down field that you are using, it's always best to use the tab key to move through the ERP because it will recognize what you've entered into that field and then move to the next field. So sometimes when you click with the mouse, you're required to click twice to update the field and then to move into the next field. Some fields are for free text typing, but they will have a limited number of characters that can be used. For some, fields where extra information is needed. You may need to attach a document afterwards because there will be a limit on the characters that you can use. Then there are date fields. You can tell that they're date fields because there is a little calendar at the side and you can either type the date in and tab across or you can click on the calendar icon and select the correct date. Some fields will have predetermined answers that you will need to select from. You cannot free text type into these answer fields. You can type ahead and select um, and you can press the space bar but for some of these fields there are just too many values so you will need to narrow your search. You can use the value lookup so you click on the three dots to bring up the value lookup box where you can type a keyword and click search then you can select the correct option and it will take you back into the form with this field completed. It is always advisable to save as draft when completing a form all mandatory fields must have some data in before selecting save as draft and you will need to have saved a form to trigger a form ID in order to attach any documents. To attach any documents to the form you will need to have saved the form then you will need to click on the paper clip in the top right to upload the document required that's already saved on your device. Click to add a document, upload and then amend the title if needed and click save. You're now ready to submit the form so you can click submit form. This will then workflow to the approver or to whoever the form needs to go to next. If the form is rejected or due to more information being needed or um, being rejected for any other reason, it will workflow back to you and you'll receive a task to make amendments to that form and either submit again 
or cancel the request.